So they're just the ones in the room, right? Ju down here, right? I, I try and pick as many as I can, but I've left quite a few of them now. We've got, we've got a lot of them, like an absolute shit ton of them. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna, it's gonna take quite a while to get through them. Um, I've got like a Newcastle kit somewhere in the room, like it's in one of these drawers. It's got like all the Newcastle 2011-12 players on there. So I've got like invited to go to Christmas parties. So it's got like loads of autographs while I was there. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd go through these ones first because, uh, like I said, we've got we got lots of them. So we'll go through probably we'll go through the best ones first. I would say uh, probably my favorite one here. Uh, quickly get these ones out from underneath as well. Not in terms of any Castle fan, but in terms of a football I love. Paolo Maldini, uh, absolute legend he is. Um, there's a reason why the retired his shirt number the best centre half in football history has to be Paolo Maldini. But uh, yeah, we've got him. Absolute legend. He was not fucking cheap by the way. Like, he was an absolute fortune, but uh, we've got him. Uh, go through go through the picture frame ones here. Um pretty much on like over on this side of the wall, like where my clock is, I'm gonna be getting like a full AC Milan sort of like eleven wall, like essentially. So if we get off and go, we've got of course Donna Ruma, the only current AC Milan player I've got because let's be honest, the team's a bit shit now. The exclusion of him and Zlatan is not really anyone there, is there? But uh yeah, I like Donna Ruma, really good goalkeeper and uh yeah of course he in terms of AC Milan keepers, he's probably the best he can get really, he's not too many old ones. Clown Seda, of course, one of the midfielders, again, another baller in his time, uh, I mean, in terms of the AC Milan, well, I got, like, you can get like eight different midfielders, like, there's so many good midfielders you can get, but in terms of the Castaneda, though, one that hits me hard, I wish I met him, Bobby Robson, uh, honestly, without a doubt, our best manager, probably ever, you could say, um, People always preferred Keegan because of what you achieved in Newcastle, but let's be real, right? Keegan didn't win any trophies, yes, we were close up on the trophies from, but Bobby Robson laid the foundations, man. Bobby Robson knew what he was doing, and um, in terms of manager, he's exactly what he wants, and uh, for me, he is better than Keegan, but uh, stick that there. And then we were stuck going through these ones now, so we're going to have got Marco Royce, uh, of course, back in the day, FIFA 30, he used to love using this card, but in terms of football, he's always had some serious uh, injury issues throughout the years, but... And his time though, he was unbelievable, wasn't he? And now I put someone I wasn't a fan of in Newcastle, Rude Hullet, of course, when he was manager there, it was pretty shit, let's be honest. But in terms of a footballer, one of the best midfielders, if not the best midfielder ever. And uh, even though he is a bit of a knob at Newcastle, um, again, AC Milan, ward, you can't not get him. I mean, he's just, he's one you got to get in that world. Newcastle United legend, Sol Campbell. Um, of course, he spent eight games there on loan, was completely past his prime. And he retired afterwards, so yeah, he didn't have a good time in Newcastle. But in terms of football, though, again, absolute legend back in the day for Arsenal, of course, the invincible season. Will I see that ever again? Probably not. Uh, that was an incredible year. Mario Gomez, an RFU 13 legend. I mean, Walter Shaw's song on him. Um, perfection, absolute perfection. Probably the worst one I got in the AC Milan war, Rui Costa. He's still an unbelievable player in his time, but AC Milan, he didn't really do much, did he? But uh, I got him because he was pretty easy to get. But uh, again, he's in the war. Best right back ever, Cafu, easily. Uh, people like to say Danny Alves because he's won, what, 40 trophies. But let's be honest, in terms of technical ability, Cafu is as good as it can get. For me, absolutely unplayable in his time. Speaking of retired shirt numbers before from uh, Maldini, we've got his partner, Boise, uh, two, two unbelievable centre-halves. The fact that he's played together for like a couple of years is absolutely disgraceful. Um, <laughs> playing against those two, I mean, any striker can have a hard time with them. Absolute. Just rocks, aren't they? But uh, we've got Riyad Mahrez next there. Uh, I don't tend to get like our Premier League players that have no relevance in Newcastle, but in terms of Riyad Mahrez, I mean, he, he was class when he, uh, when he still is class, actually. Of course, a Leicester Man City, I mean, he's very underrated because people always say, oh, we prefer Salah players like that, which, to be fair, is true, but Riyad Mahrez is severely underrated. Like, I really do think he's up there for one of the best. Manuel Neuer next. Um, a goalkeeper that was the best in the world at one point, dipped and then became the best in the world once again. I mean, you don't see that very often with goalkeepers, but Manuel Neuer, I mean, again, what an absolute baller he is, of course. A third place Ballon d'Or, one from him. Very hard for a goalkeeper that happened to. And speaking of Bayern Munich players, I've got Swainsley again. He's the, I mean, just a net to tank, and he didn't quite perform at Man U, but uh, at Bayern, all he was severely good. Uh, he was an absolute player. And speaking of Bayern Munich players, we've got Philip Lom again, uh, best right back uh, in terms of Bayern's history, you could say. Uh, yeah, I think what was the record? He never had a yellow card in his career. Like, that's pretty impressive, let's be honest. But in terms of Philip Lom, no, again, um, <clears throat> this is an unbelievable player, wasn't he? Uh, had some very good years of Bayern Munich. Now, going on to England players now. So, Jeff Hurst, the only hat trick in World Cup history. The greatest England player ever, you had to say. 
It is the only reason we are why we have a World Cup, regardless of how controversial that second goal of his was. Iconic, absolutely iconic. We don't breed players like this anymore. Harry Kane would never ever do that. It's as simple as that. But uh, listen, no um, unbelievable player. Best England goalkeeper ever, Gordon Banks, has to be there as well. Wrestling peace man. Uh, arguably the best save in world history against Paddy when he kept that head out the near corner. Again, you don't see players like that anymore. Imagine Jordan Pick if I try to do that. No chance. But um, in terms of the managers I wanted to cast in there, we've got Frankie Lampard next. Uh, big Frankie Lampard. Of course, best wishes. He sent that to me there. But uh, seriously, though, Frank Lampard. Um, people always ask Gerard or uh, Lampard. I prefer Lampard. Um, Yes, you can see obviously Joe playing much shitter teams, which is true. But uh, Lampard, for me, you know, he's he had everything with me. You know, he could, he could score goals, and that's what you kind of need from attacking midfield. What do you get like hundred and eighty goals from a midfield? It's absolutely ridiculous. But um, in terms of football ability, I just thought Lampard's better. Uh, people prefer Joe for his passing and stuff like that. But for me, I'm more of a Lampard fan myself, to be honest. But uh, still, though, two uh, very class players. And he cast a player that had a good loan spell but didn't perform his second loan spell, Mr. Kennedy. You could say um, that, that penalty against Carl ruined him at Newcastle. Um, oh shit, I dropped it. Um, but uh, in terms of him, though, he, he's done a lot, a lot better, Jutafi. You know, um, he's completely changed his career around. Fair play to him. But at Newcastle, um, oh, he had some hard years there. That's where I say the least. But I think, um, I'm trying to think why he said it was bad again. I think it was something to do with like, the, like how he's living in Newcastle. Like, he wasn't living well there uh, and he couldn't see his family and stuff like that. But uh, next up, we've got Eric Abidal, of course. We've got to get some Barcelona players in here. Uh, I've got a sweet swap for AC Milan and Barcelona. Eric uh, Abidal, yes, he's not the greatest centre half ever, but again, no Champions League winner. Uh, you can't fault that, can you? Absolute legend. Obviously, you would have seen this guy in the thumbnail. Not a footballer, but Real Mysterio. You can't not get him. He's an absolute legend, man. He would 6 one 9 you in a heartbeat. It's as simple as that. Real Mysterio is a baller. And uh, for me, deserving to be on the wall of fame. But uh, next up, when our AC Milan player is Zambrotta, um, I, I, it was impossible to get Nesta, guys, so I just got Zambrotta instead. Um, of course, you know, World Cup, as you can see there, um, Berlin against France. But uh, listen, though, uh, again, easily in the Hall of Fame for that two ballers. Um, this one's not a footballer, but listen, it's going to be a very sad day when this man dies. So, David Attenborough, he's a legend. So you can't say David Attenborough's not a legend. He is an absolute. Icon of the game. Um, uh, seriously, I got a very soft spot for Dave Atten, but very glad I managed to obtain his autograph because, let's face it, legends, simple as best as you can get. Um, but you've seen this one as well in the, uh, in the, what you call it, in the thumbnail. Callum Wilson, my favourite Newcastle player without a doubt. Uh, people would prefer St Maxman, but for me, Wilson's such a game changer. Um, I honestly love the bloke. Uh, he's, uh, I love how cocky he is, you know, he knows he's good. Uh, I love that about players. Um, he comes out every interview, he's like, oh, that was easy to do, I can do this every week. Like, I love that sort of enthusiasm in the team. We need more of that in Newcastle, in my opinion. But uh, a player that hasn't performed in Newcastle this play uh, season, but I do think he's a very good player, Ryan Fraser. He's had a really bad season at Newcastle, and it's quite surprising because um, this guy was competing with Red Hazard two seasons ago. He got like 15 assists in the league with Bournemouth. That's mental. If you need to get like a little bit of that in the cast, that's what we need. But uh, it's a lot of injury issues as well, whether people think that's fake or not. That's in our discussion to say. But for me, the Ryan Fraser is a really good player. I really hope he starts getting into the next season because he's he was a gem we got. Again, not a footballer, but Christopher Eccleston. I mean, anyone watches Doctor Who back in 2005 will know how iconic this bloke is. I mean, yeah, he, he was so good as a doctor. I didn't tend to watch Doctor enough, like you can say a DVD by now, but 9th and 10th Doctor are both class, aren't they? But for me, uh, Eccleston is as good as it gets. I absolutely loved him, but I know Tennant is a much favourable one. Right, next up, again, I know Newcastle player, I wish I could meet Gary Speed. Of course, absolutely devastating what happened to him, but for Newcastle United, though, he was, again, an unbelievable player. And it's obviously sad to see this sort of thing, but uh, obviously, you know, people need to speak out. Um, obviously, you've got a lot of people around your friends, family. But again, I actually loved him as a player. Yeah, so we've got David Ginola. Might have spent only a season a bit in Newcastle, but honestly, technically gifted one. Yeah, I mean, that guy, that, that video where he runs past Gary Neville, he just completely misses him. It's just so good, isn't it? Honestly, have that Neville. Shh. But uh, seriously, though, no, um, I actually love Ginola. He was just class, wasn't he? A player that I hope turns up in the Euros, a Jaden Sancho. This is your time, son. Go out there and make your name. But uh, again, Jaden Sancho, a, a player I love, you know. Um, I don't think he's going to go to Man U this season, if I'm being honest. But uh, he's a player I would love to see in the Premier League at some point. Uh, he's definitely done the job over on the Bundesliga. But in terms of Euros this season, these sort of players have got to step up if we want to get someone from the tournament. 
I personally think we're going to bottle it. I think we're going to honestly get around the 16 exit. But uh, next up, we got um, a Newcastle manager. Everyone slags off. I really didn't think he was that bad. I'd empowered you. I, I, I really think this guy got a hard time in the club. Yes, you know, he had a couple of bad seasons for us. But let's be honest, mate, actually stitched the guy over. He got rid of Kabai halfway into the season, our best player. Like, what's the manager meant to do? We didn't replace the centre midfield. I mean, now he got relegated because of it. He could have honestly took one on our European winner wasn't for that decision. It was absolutely baffling. But uh, I just don't think he was a bad manager. I really think people were giving a hard time. Um, I really do think he was a decent manager, Eddie Castle. Yes, you know, at West Brom and Palace, he's a bit shit. But uh, Eddie Castle, yeah, I didn't think he was that bad. But in terms of the player, I ditched him. We got him here, yeah, Kabai. Um, even though he did have a bad end to us in Newcastle, in terms of football, though, he's as good as he gets at Newcastle in the 2011. Love him. I absolutely love him, the blood bits. But uh, seriously, in terms of Kabai, um, again, a player I love watching play. He's just so good in the ball. Um, he's just someone you always felt like he was going to do something. But uh, with a good midfield, I need a good strike. And of course, like I said, I've got Papi Sissi on the ball, but we've got your strike partner here, Denver Bar. 29 goals in 58 games in the Premier League for Newcastle. Shearer levels are as good as it gets. Um, honestly, uh, I wish he spent a bit longer in Newcastle, but oh, I love him so much. You know, what? unbelievable player, of course. You know, iconic uh, Gerard slip up here with him as in the end of it. But uh, in terms of Newcastle career, that was pretty good as well. The streets will never forget. Well, no, we won't forget because everyone posts every week, but. Mm. Next up, we got three in this one. Um, I wanted to get I wanted to get Del Via by himself, but like we got this one for the same price. So I thought you were might as well get Santi because the one in Santa as well. Of course, you know uh, again, iconic Spanish players for the Euros in the World Cup. But uh, no, I, I'm fan of them. Del Via is a player I always love watching uh, play. Again, I don't remember an awful lot of them because I was quite young at the time, but I did well, used to watch them quite a bit. And they I iconic again in it. Next up, we've got Matt Hummels, again, our Dortmund player. Um, just think goes on the ball with Royce and Sancho, doesn't it? Uh, again, you know, another iconic German player. And uh, yeah, I've got quite a few of them in this one, trust me. Uh, I'm not a Germany fan, but uh, it's not thought we'd get that one. The guy whose Twitter's name was banned for a few days, Memphis Depay. Oh, shit. Maybe you can say that. But uh, again, no Memphis Depay. Um, a player that kind of failed at Man U, but... Definitely agree for, uh, we gained his form at uh, Leon and Goods because I, I do watch, like watching him play. Another player that I would love to see sometime come here, but uh, obviously that's not going to happen, Mike Ashley. Next up, though, we got a Baron Door winner once again, Shevchenko, uh, the ACM land striker. Of course, he scored uh, twice in the Champions League final against Liverpool, bottled it. Scored twice in the Champions League final, what was it, a year after, two years after, I beat Liverpool that time. So he got his revenge in the end, but again, an unbelievable player and rightfully deserved to be on the wall. Next up, Newcastle goalkeeper. I loved him in my time. Tim Crow. I, I honestly, I wish we get him back. Please get this man back. He needs to retire at this football club. But man, still got it. Um, he still has got it. Um, for me, you know, he's the best penalty saver in world football. If you get him and you're like in a Europa League or in a cup final, like, it's the man you want him go because he, he knows how to manipulate players. He knows how to get in players' heads. And um, that's absolute game changing in a penalty shootout. And he knows how to get the job done. He has done it multiple times. Next up, though, another Newcastle icon. Patrick Clivert, um, when he spent one season in Newcastle, but I thought he was pretty good in that season, to be honest. Um, of course, not as good as he was in his Barcelona days, but still had it, in my opinion. Still wasn't awful, but... Last but not least, though, uh, this one's not for me. It's my uh, Liverpool fan, mate. Uh, we got Diego Jota there. Of course, been to beast for Liverpool this season, but that was off for me, personally. I'm not going to keep that one, but... Yep, uh, that's pretty much all the ones I went through. But, uh, like I said, I've got a few shirts lying around. But uh, I'll be honest, guys, this video was like 16 minutes long. But listen, that's why I call an autograph collection. Can he beat that? Uh, let's see. But um, ooh, uh, nah, my thoughts killing after that one. Ooh, I've been talking for quite a while there. But thank you guys for watching. Now, uh, obviously, you enjoyed the video. Make sure to smash the like button. In terms of my next video, I'll probably be back for the Liverpool match. If it's on Saturday or Sunday, I don't comment what dates on. But like I said, I'll be in the pub tomorrow. So yeah, I probably won't be uploading that one. But... Take care, guys. Thank you all for watching. Yes, I'll see you on the next one.